Hi everyone, it's Caitlin from Really Big Plant. Thank you so much for joining me for this video. Really big plant. We're gonna be doing another episode of plant chores and for this video, I basically just have a ton of plants that need to be washed. Um, some of them have pests, some of them don't. I have one plant that I need to treat for scale, which is like probably my least favorite pest because you have to do like manual removal. And I got a really huge plant that needs to be taken outside for a wash because it does not fit in my shower. So that's exciting. And yeah, just basically a whole bunch of plants that need to be cleaned today. Let's just get to it. So I moved all of the plants out of the way. I moved my big monstera from the front. I moved my snake plant wall. I moved some of the plants that are like surrounding this plant where it lives. They're all in the kitchen right now. Okay, I'm gonna get my shoes on and we're gonna take it outside. The ceiling in my apartment and like where we're about to take this plant has like variable heights. So uh, my plan is to just let the plant kind of smash into the ceiling because I don't know what else to do. So if we lose a couple of leaves from the top of the plant, that's okay. Alright, let's go. I think I need to tip it sideways a little. I'm worried that if I tip it, it's gonna fall over. Okay, do you have keys? sprayer here um it's like a gallon or something like that and it's just full of water right now so i'm just gonna hose this plant down the wind is blowing it's kind of anticlimactic when i use this in the apartment somehow it feels like this is so much pressure but outside because it's just spraying everywhere it feels kind of weak if you have like a hose or something where you can do this easily, I would recommend using a hose. This is what we're working with for now. Am I getting you wet? Sorry. No, no, no. Is it gonna blow over? Oh. Okay. <laughs> oh, oh. I'm approximating ideally like 30 percent 20 but 25 to 50 is gonna be a good range okay now I've got my alcohol mix She had a spider mite outbreak last week. What did you just say? I didn't have a spider mite. No, you. Oh. <laughs> okay, I feel like this is pretty good. Now I'm just gonna stand here with this while it dries off a little bit because it's all wet. I could just show you while we're waiting for this tree to dry a little bit about this plant. So it's called a ficus triangularis because of the triangular leaves. And it is a ficus. So I know some people do struggle with this plant. And the key for me is that I'm on a pretty consistent watering schedule with this. When I saw that water was like going into the pot, um, it's totally fine because it's time to water this plant anyway. But if this were like off cycle for the watering schedule, um, I water it about once every two weeks. I'd probably 
cover the pot with some saran wrap or just plastic bags or something to try to stop the soil from getting unnecessarily wet. It's probably like over 10 feet tall. It's just like really uh, leaning over at the top now. So I need to like figure out how I'm gonna stake it up. Um, I might just like attach more poles, the tops of these poles, although they're already kind of floppy. So I'm not sure if that's gonna be a good option. Um, I could also just prune it back, but I kind of don't want to. So um, I've seen people that have these ficus triangularis and they form can form really beautiful big arches. And I feel like my plant is maybe on its way to doing that. So that's exciting. Let's go back inside. I'm just scraping them off the ground now. casualty <laughs> which is pretty good in my opinion all right I feel super good about this I'm really glad that I washed this plant off I got a lot of the dust off of the leaves did a little preventative pest treatment and now we're back in place and it's ready to just go and I guess accumulate dust again but for now it's clean and I'm feeling really good about it I've got this bowl of air plants here oops I started the video by just filling this with water because I'm actually going to let these soak in here for pretty much the duration of me filming all of these other tasks and then we'll come back to these at the end and dry them off and I can show them to you a little bit. So these are just gonna sit here and soak while we take care of some other plants. So these plants that I have in front of me now um, are normally located next to my green chair on the floor. They're all kind of like lower light plants. This one is a Hartley philodendron, philodendron cordatum. It's in a, let's see if I can show you. It's in an eight inch pot and it's really growing directionally because I never rotate it and I always keep it facing the same way. So it's been growing really well and I really like it. And I, so far, like, don't think it has any pest issues, but it's just kind of dusty. So I want to give it a wash. So this is a Maranta Lucanura Kerchoviana. I actually normally have not been able to keep Maranta alive for as long as I've kept this one. I've had this one for about six months now, and it's doing pretty well, I'd have to say. Um, it's starting to do that Maranta thing where it gets really leggy. Um, so I might cut it back, but I might just leave it alone. I thought I saw a mealybug on here the other day, but it was just like, I don't know, like a clump of dog hair and dirt and stuff. And it's just like, these need, these need a rinse. So but they're going in the sink. And then this one is a little Peperomia obtusifolia variegata, which I think is actually really, really cute, but it's a total dust magnet. Like, I don't know what the deal is with these leaves because it sits right next to these other two plants. I don't know if the leaves have some kind of texture that like, makes them stickier in some way than some of my other plants but i've noticed that this one just gets totally covered in dust um and takes away a lot of the shine on the leaves so like the shiny leaves you see are the new ones that haven't had a chance to accumulate as much dust but somehow i feel like this plant is always looking really dirty so we're gonna wash this one off too so let's just head on over to my kitchen and give these guys a rinse one of the things that I like to do, which might not be applicable to you if you don't have the right kind of sink, but I will stick the four inch pots into the drain hole to stabilize them when I rinse them off. Um, just a little hack that works out for me.
This plant has scale and it's a specific type of scale. It's cactus scale, which is not the same as the brown scale that is more common on like house plants and other types of tropicals. Cacti are susceptible to their whole own range of pests. This is an Apuntia um, ficus indica, which is the most common like edible type of prickly pear cactus. And they are very abundant in California. So I don't live in Southern California where these are growing all over the place outside. I'm in the San Francisco Bay Area, but it's still close enough to very warm weather where these plants are very readily available anywhere you go. And they're usually pretty reasonably priced. I think mean, scale is the nastiest pest because you have to like really do a manual removal. You can't just spray a plant with scale and hope that anything's gonna happen because the reason they're called scale is because they form these scales that protect the bug inside. And actually it's so gross. The females are bigger and they form this protective layer and then they actually die under their little scale after they've laid eggs and the eggs develop under the protection of the scale flap and then eventually like bust out and spread to the rest of the plant. So when you start seeing those females, like definitely you remove them because they're actually already at a very mature stage in their life cycle where they are probably laying eggs and the next generation of scale is developing underneath that little dome. So just do your best to try to get rid of them. Okay, so I've got some Q-tips and a garbage bag I will be using to dispose the scale into and my trusty bottle of alcohol water. So what I do is I take my alcohol water and just spray the whole thing first to just kind of soften or like loosen the scale a little bit. Okay, this is my least favorite task of the day. Okay, I think I have done all that I can do for this for now. Um, it actually wasn't as bad as I thought. This cactus scale comes off maybe a little bit more easily than the brown scale. Once I sprayed it with a little bit of alcohol water, for the most part, it came right off. For now, I think we're looking pretty good. Um, I need to just be a little bit more diligent in checking this plant. I'm gonna just keep my eye on this and I'm actually hoping that this should be okay. I mean, being realistic, it's not over. Um, usually one round of treatment for a pest is not sufficient on any plant, um, except for maybe spider mites. Sometimes you wash them off and they don't come back, but this plant is probably gonna have another round of scale. I'll probably try treating it one more time, but then if it happens again, I'll probably get rid of it just because um, I really don't enjoy doing this and I'm not super attached to this plant. If it seems like the scale on this is really, really persistent, I might have to eventually get rid of it. But anyway, we're looking good and I'm gonna just go ahead and put this back and I feel a lot better about this now that I got those scale off and they actually came off pretty easily. We're angled over here now and this is a Diffenbachia um, tropic snow and I've had it for a while now and a lot of you guys have commented on this plant and it's like really great. I love it too. So thank you for noticing my huge Diffenbachia. 
Um, it's actually been able to withstand lower light than I thought. Um, I was kind of worried that the plant wasn't going to be able to live in this location and still continue to grow, but it's been growing and growing. Um, I can just show you guys sort of what's going on with this plant. From the angle I like to film in, this plant looks really great because all of the leaves face the window, which is over there. Um, but if I come this way, I can just kind of show you. <laughs> So you see how this plant is basically really severely leaning in one direction and I'm okay with it. Got it raised up on an upturned pot and yeah, from this side, uh, it doesn't look nearly as impressive. So this is definitely the angle for viewing this plant and I really like the way that it sort of flanks my couch. But anyway, what I want to do right now is go ahead and just wipe down some of these big leaves because um, they definitely accumulate a lot of dust and it's been a little while since I have wiped off this plant. I've got some paper towels, I've got a spray bottle that's about like 30% alcohol and the rest is water. And then I've got my trusty big sponge. So I like to use this big sponge to support the back of plant leaves when I wipe them because I usually have pretty long nails and, and it's soft. I like to use it as a little way to just support the back of the leaf when I wipe them down. Oh, you know, the other thing I wanted to mention about this, I showed this big sponge in, I think my first plant chores video. And one of the things that I didn't show was that you should spray the sponge, like sterilize it between Definitely between plants, but between touching different parts of the plant because you don't want to be responsible for spreading the pest when you could have avoided it. So, um, and that's the same thing if you're using your hand. It's not just a sponge. Like when you go around, be careful if you're touching all of your plants and not checking for pests because it's a really easy way to accidentally just like spread pests all over your collection. Try to keep a clean sponge or clean hands while I'm washing off my plants. So, and the same thing goes for what you're wiping with. You know, don't. This might sound obvious, but if it's not, uh, I'm gonna just say it. Don't keep using the same cloth on like every plant. Not trying to scare anyone, but just biosecurity is really important. And there are steps that we can take um, that aren't too drastic to make sure our plants are living in kind of a safe, controlled environment where they're not just like rampantly spreading disease and pests to each other because of our desire to clean them, you know? Okay, and while I'm at it, I'm just gonna wipe off some of these bigger Monstera leaves. And I thought I saw some little fluffy spider mite webbing, but I think it's just like a big pile of dust, especially like, you can probably see from there how dirty this paper towel is. This leaf is dirty, so I think it's just like some fuzz from dustiness. And I do think that spider mites kind of look more like a pile of really thick dust than spider webs um, once the infestation gets kind of bad. So sometimes when I see like a thick layer of dust, it freaks me out, but it's actually a lot of times usually just dust. I don't know why my apartment's so dusty, you guys, but. Okay, so I got this philodendron giganteum, which has featured in a couple of my different videos, and um, it had spider mites kind of recently. I did a couple rounds of neem oil treatment and it just wasn't really working. I ended up using Captain Jack's dead bug, um, which actually does leave a little bit of a residue, so like a whitish residue on the leaves. And um, I guess, it looks pretty good on camera, but in person, the leaves are like quite dirty. So, okay, I can just show you, bring the camera in a little bit. So the leaves have all of these white stains on them from using the chemical treatment. So what I wanna do now is just go through and wash some of that treatment off so that this plant can look really nice again.
I'm literally spraying my hand with the alcohol too because <laughs> I don't want to spread the spider mites from leaf to leaf. I used to think that spider mites were the worst pest because they're very hard to see and they spread pretty easily. And um, that used to freak me out. Like the, the fact that they can kind of live invisible for a little while because they're so difficult to see and then they kind of like erupt into a huge problem. That being said, spider mites are treatable. Okay, I feel like it's already looking a lot better, like the leaves look really shiny again, so I feel happy about that. So I'm gonna go put this plant back, and yeah, I'm really glad that I washed these leaves off, and I'm gonna just continue with the spider mite patrol on this guy, and just keep checking up on it until I basically have like two months of checks and I haven't seen spider mites before I actually put this back in its place because I had it in a location over by my window where it was touching a lot of other plants and so or like very close to a lot of other plants so I've just been keeping it kind of isolated over here these days. I received this ficus umbellata as part of my subscription box. I mentioned during that unboxing that I noticed that this plant had spider mites and so Right after I finished the unboxing, I took it to my sink and just washed it off. And I didn't use any products, no neem oil or anything. I just rinsed it with water um, just to see if that would make a difference. But it was not enough. And the plant has a whole bunch of spider mites again. So now I'm going to just go over to my sink and treat it with some neem oil. Um, but yeah, this ficus umbellata, it's a really beautiful plant. Okay, so here's the ficus umbellata complete with spider mites. <laughs> so now I just got this spray bottle here. Um, there was just water in it before. Just gonna give it a little rinse. Now we're gonna mix up the neem oil solution. So I've got this concentrated neem oil here and two to four tablespoons per gallon of water. So this is 16 ounces and a gallon is 128. So that's gonna be like a quarter to a half tablespoon. It doesn't need to be super precise for something like neem oil. So I'm just gonna use this tablespoon and eyeball a quarter to a half tablespoon of neem oil. I forgot to say this earlier, but ficus plants tend to have kind of visible stomata um, and little pores that can be on the surface on the front and back of the leaf. And because ficus plants create latex, which is like sort of a white milky sap, these little pores can look like little white dots sometimes. If you have a ficus umbellata, you probably are familiar with these little white dots. Um, they're very apparent to me and I've seen them on my fiddle leaf fig, but actually I think this ficus umbellata has a lot more of these white spots than some of my other ficus. So it might be something that you feel like is concerning, but you don't need to be worried about the like very evenly spaced white dots on the plant. You really want to just stare at it and see if any of them are moving because they definitely shouldn't move around if they're part of the plant leaf. Like if it's moving, it's a pest. So I've got my air plants in this bowl here. I've got this one, this Tillandsia caput medusae, and it is in flower. It just started growing in inflorescence. Um, 
it's red on one side and green on the other because I have it in a really bright location and the red side faces the light. So I think it's really cool that you can see the like the green side of the inflorescence and the red side of it. And one of the things with the Tillandsias that do make the bright colorful flowers, the colors are definitely pronounced if you give them really bright light. This one um, I had just soaking in the top of the bowl and I made sure not to get the little inflorescence wet because sometimes that can lead to them rotting. So if you do have an air plant that has started to flower, continue with your normal watering schedule, but also just try not to get the inflorescence wet when you water it. I mean, if you get a little water on there, it should be fine, but you don't wanna leave the inflorescence like soaking in water overnight. So anyway, I'm gonna just take these out of the bowl. Um, so when you water your air plants, try to get as much water as possible, like out of the plant so like shake them off upside down when you take them out of the water. The thing though that I should say about this is it is making its flower now which means that this plant is gonna die. Um, it sort of like is the the beginning of the end when an air plant starts to flower. So what happens is the plant grows its flower and it usually is simultaneously starting to grow pups. So I've noticed on these caput medusae type air plants. Sometimes you don't see the pups for a while because they develop like inside of the lobes and they eventually kind of like bust through because they get big. But actually inside of each of these little like leaf areas, there's actually a good amount of just like empty space. Um, so the pups can, the pups actually tend to like develop in there and you don't see them until they get quite big. Um, the other thing is because there are these like sort of caverns inside of these air plants that form these empty spaces, it's really important to try to shake out as much of the water as you can when you dry them and also leave them upside down to dry. Here I just have like a couple of these caput medusae type air plants and then the rest of them are all pretty much like I think just the Ionantha type of air plant. So I'm gonna just go ahead and put them all out on a little towel. I normally do this over my sink and don't just shake water all over the floor, but I'm just gonna wipe it up with a towel as soon as I'm done filming this. It just was looking really dark in my kitchen and I thought this would be more interesting if I did this with a little bit better light. But um, yeah, I normally don't just shake water all over my whole apartment. Okay, so um, this air plant is dead. I think it was just like at the bottom and the center of this bowl. I think I kind of overstuffed this bowl with air plants. I, I know I do. Um, and sometimes the ones that were at the very center kind of die off. The one I think that was just at the very center of the group didn't get enough light and just didn't make it. So I'm not going to try to rehab this or anything. I'm just gonna get rid of this one. Sorry, guy. All right, everyone, thank you for sticking with it if you are still watching. And if you enjoyed this video, please go ahead and give it a like and subscribe to my channel if you have not already. And for the people who have liked this video and my other videos and have subscribed to my channel, I just wanna say thank you so much. I would love to hear from you guys on what pests you've been dealing with recently, what your least favorite pests are to deal with or if you are having any pest struggles at the moment and i will admit i do get pretty lazy and sometimes just will go long periods of time without washing any plants so um <laughs> i feel like this has actually been kind of long overdue to just start rinsing some of my things off a little bit more again and dealing with the scale and that apuntia feels like a weight off my shoulders for now it is hopefully scale free and my Gigantium is hopefully spider mite free and my Ficus Umbellata will hopefully be spider mite free soon enough. So just really keeping my fingers crossed over here and keeping my eyes sharp trying to spot spider mites as soon as they pop into my collection. I hope everyone is having a really great week and is hopefully not having too many pest issues but just know that if you are, you're totally not alone. Thank you so, so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this plant tours video. I hope to catch you in the next one. Bye.